Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Troy, and in today's video, we're gonna be adding corals and more to the saltwater reef tank behind me. I haven't done a true update on this tank in a little over six months, and there's been a lot of changes. Can't wait to walk through all of those today. Before we do that, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and let's dive right in. Okay, so this reef tank was set up originally about 10 months ago, and there have been a lot of changes since. So we're gonna go back in time a little bit and build up to where we are today as I added corals at different points throughout that six or seven month span. I took some advice from some experienced reefers out there that just told me to go slow with this tank, adding corals gradually over time, and I'm really glad that I followed that advice because there have been some learning curves along the way. I have a lot of experience keeping freshwater tanks, but this is really my first saltwater tank and I wanted to make sure I did it right. I'm going to show all the new corals I added over this six or seven month span, but also the new fish I got, some of the new invertebrates, and also some tank upgrades in terms of equipment. So with all that being said, let's go back about seven months ago when I got my first coral. We're sending you back to the future. Okay, so the first corals that I picked up for this tank back in April were green star polyps. I got three different frags and I intended to glue these to the background of the tank. After drip acclimating them, I used some coral glue on the base rock below the coral to then glue it to the background. I was trying to get the GSP to grow upwards towards the light and cover the background but these didn't really take off, so I ended up moving the GSP later on. So about a month later, I picked up a couple Zoa frags and put them right here on this rock. I would eventually move them to another area where I'm starting a bit of a Zoa garden. So a couple very simple and beginner-friendly corals to start off with, and I'm also gonna go with another beginner coral and the Duncan. I love the Duncan because it has a little bit of that flow to it with each of the different polyps having some extensions. And like I said, they tend to do well in most beginner setups and can deal with a few mistakes. The Duncan has grown a lot in my tank already and it's looking great. You can even see my emerald crab hanging out below it. So a month later in August, I ordered four new corals from Worldwide Corals. These were ordered online because they had a couple corals that I had my eye on. They had some really good packaging here and all four corals were actually in one bag which was kind of cool. Also the Xenia, which I'll get to in a second, was in a cup so that it wasn't damaged in shipping. So the first coral here is the Xenia. I know that this can be kind of a pest coral and grow very fast, but I intend to keep this coral off on its own on an island so that it doesn't spread too much. Next up, I have the bicolor candy cane coral, and then I also got a cotton candy chalice coral. And then lastly, I picked up a mean green zoanthid, which will join the other two zoas as I create that zoa garden. So at this point, I felt like I was getting the hang of some of the different parameters that I needed to check to make sure the corals were healthy. And that was when I got my most expensive coral yet, the black torch euphilia coral. This was already a pretty big coral, had a ton of great color and movement, so I had to buy it. And I was finally getting some of those bright corals that have a lot of great movement. This was definitely my favorite coral that I had to this point, but I had plans to get another similar species next month. So then just last week, I picked up one of my favorite corals yet. As you can see, I'm drip acclimating all my corals before I put it into the tank. But this one here is the green hammer. This hammer coral already has some awesome bright green color and with some of that movement and color, it really brings this reef tank to life, which is great because I feel like I've been shoveling a ton of money into these corals. I declare bankruptcy! Just please don't tell my wife. So we'll get a great look at all these corals at the end of the video, but I also wanted to show the new fish and other inhabitants that I have for this tank. One of the new fish I added to the tank last month is this Canary Blenny. It is an awesome fish that has that bright yellow color. I feel like that was kind of missing from my tank so far, and I really like the choice. I already had a Blenny in this tank. I had the Lawnmower Blenny, 
but because the tank is a decent size and neither are known to be very aggressive, I think the two blennies can do just fine. The lawnmower blenny is one of the reasons I got the canary in the first place, because the lawnmower is one of the best personalities of a fish that I've had. It just swims around perching itself on different rocks and just looking up at you, kind of like that gopher. Alan! 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 And that is why his name is Alan. And then I also added some new inverts along the way. Right here is the pincushion urchin. This guy looks really cool and also will help with a lot of algae buildup on my rocks. I also got three more Nasaria snails for this tank. I just love Nasaria snails because they burrow into your sand and keep it from collecting detritus. So really quickly, just some equipment upgrades that I've made throughout this seven month span. First here was the Ultra Zero pump from Ciche. This really speeds up the water change process, not only draining the tank, but then moving the pump into the bin where I make my salt water so that it can push the water into the tank. That avoids any type of buckets that I would have to haul back and forth and it makes it very convenient. Next up, my ATO actually kind of malfunctioned. I had the Osmolator from Tunes, which was highly recommended, but this one just wasn't working. I tried many different setups and cleanings and I could just not get it to work consistently. So I switched it out for this Duetto ATO. My brother Quinn has one in his Waterbox 20 Cube, which has worked really well for him for over a year now. So I'm giving this a shot. I really like the simplicity of the setup. I also got this skimmer stand to raise up my skimmer about five inches in my sump. This is to make sure my skimmer has the optimal water level in the sump. And then lastly, this isn't really equipment, but I did get a new rock and I intend to just add another little archway in that back right corner. Not only to give the fish another area to swim around and hide in, but to also place some more corals along the top. So here's the tank today, which is finally starting to look like a real reef tank with some of my corals starting to grow and I can't wait for them to grow into bigger pieces and also to add more coral down the line. So overall things are going really well. I got through some speed bumps in terms of my alkalinity dropping, but now that I have a good water change and dosing routine, everything has balanced out and the tank has been doing really well the last few months. Maybe the largest coral in this tank right now is this Duncan Colony, which is really cool to see whenever I spot feed it some mysis shrimp as it will literally grab the shrimp and shrink up. And then one more note on the lawnmower blenny here. Someone had commented on the last video saying I didn't have enough algae in my tank and that this lawnmower blenny would just die. Well, I've had plenty of algae that I've had to deal with and the lawnmower blenny has loved that. And even though I'm a beginner when it comes to saltwater reef tanks, I do try to research everything I'm doing, even if I might make a beginner mistake here and there. But maybe next time that person won't underestimate me. I underestimated you. Yeah, well, maybe next time you will estimate me.
Okay guys, that does it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed seeing all the new corals and updates on this tank. As always, I'll be sharing the progression and updates on this tank on the channel. So if you'd like to follow along, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next week.